about sale if you're talking about Bitcoin. A article posted on TheGuardian.com by Samuel Gibbs on October 29, 2013 tells the story of a man who purchased $27 worth of Bitcoin and later forgot about it for four years. And when he checked on it, he saw that he had $886,000 worth in his account. Here's a graph of the year of this year alone. As you can see at the beginning of the year, the price of one Bitcoin was $750. Midway through the year, it rises up to $2,500. And as, as of right now, it's sitting around $7,300 and it's continuing to rise. Now many of you have a question is like, what is Bitcoin? Bitcoin is pretty much an like, online currency and it's also a, a unique method of payment. How do you get Bitcoin? Well, in order to get Bitcoin, you must sign up to an exchange website where that's pretty much where you buy Bitcoin. There's two examples, Coinbase and um, Gemini. Here's what one of them looks like. Kind of the website. Sign up, link your account to your uh, bank account and kind of transfer money into it. And then you can buy Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. And I tell you this because I'm pretty sure a lot of us do online shopping, and you can do that with Bitcoin. <coughs> I've done extensive research on top of it, along, along with also kind of getting into it. Um, I think Bitcoin is a solution to many of the dollar's issues. First, I'll talk about the problems, then the causes, before finally discussing the solutions. I will now first talk about the problems. One major problem with online shopping right now is the middleman. So you know that, um, that you know that when you try to order something from Amazon, you have to constantly put all that information in your address, all of this, and all that. You have to remember your credit card or your debit card information. Well, Bitcoin is a one-to-one -one transfer. So it's pretty much, you, you eliminate the bank and it's just you and the person you're buying from. And all that involves is your address. You get a specific address um, tailored to your Bitcoin wallet and you pretty much give that to them and that's where they send the money and then the unique system about Bitcoin is um, it's validated through well, Bitcoin miners so it's pretty much they use their computers to validate the transactions <coughs> another problem that is um, banks and government and how they control our money unlike, unlike Bitcoin that's decentralized so pretty much meaning it doesn't belong to anybody. Nobody really runs Bitcoin. It's just a, a accumulation of all of us who own it and selling it. <coughs> According to James Sirickey article, The Real Problem with Big Banks, published on the New Yorker website on February 18, 2013, discusses the major issue of banks and how they often lend out your money and some in uh, rare cases, also could lose your money. Now that I've talked about the problems, I'll now discuss the causes. Cause is, most, I'm pretty sure most of us store our money in bank accounts, I do too. Um, this obviously um, puts the bank in between us and where we're purchasing our items, which causes, uh, I mean, it's not really efficient when you really think about it. And another problem is all the laws that restrict you from using your money to buy what you want. Unlike Bitcoin that it doesn't belong to the government, the government can't see what you use it for. You can pretty much buy what you want with your money, which I think is a good idea because I mean, you work hard for your money, you should be allowed to buy what you want. Now that I've discussed the causes, I'll now talk about the solutions. I think you should all invest in Bitcoin, whether it's $10, $50 or $100. Any amount you put in, I'm pretty sure you'll get a good investment in it. I think another solution is spreading the word to your friends. I think it's important for all of us to, I think it's kind of like the future, so that the more we know now, the better we'll be prepared for the future. And I think, and according to Forbes writer Peter Ferreira, article on government's reaction to Bitcoin, they pretty much seen the vulnerability of the dollar how vulnerable it is <clears throat> so I think I think um, government should adopt Bitcoin as a major payment method because not really um, 
as of right now, it's not really, you can't just go to like a subway and use Bitcoin, but I think that's the future to bring it into a, like a major way of paying for stuff and also increase support for Bitcoin. And I guess we could also um, revamp like the dollar to kind of think of new ways to use it because the system is pretty old. So we have to adopt to new systems. Now that I've discussed the solutions, I'll now go on to my conclusion. I first talked about the problems, then the causes, before finally discussing the solutions. I think Bitcoin is the future of online currency, online purchasing and online currency, and it's just the beginning. And as you saw at the beginning with the guy that bought $27 worth of Bitcoin, and in four years it turned into $886,000. I mean, what what's to lose if you put $10 in? Who knows, maybe in five years they'll be worth $10,000. Thank you.